Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this 1971 280SE 3.5 Coupe Mercedes Benz painted in grey blue metallic, paint code DB906. So, basically, this car came in for some rust repairs, as you can see down the bottoms of those sills. There was just a couple of uh, other minor repairs here and there around the car too that we did. So we just ended up painting the passenger side quarter panel and the entire driver's side side as well. So as you can see there I did all the prep work and uh, took it into the spray booth, masked it all up. I've then wiped it down with wax and grease remover. And then having just a, a look over the car here just for anything else that I may have missed. Um, so you can see a lot of cut throughs on this car. Um, it's basically because there's so much, it's been done so many times and there's been sort of little uh, blow ins and little spot repairs done here and there. So when I've sanded into it, it's just cut through uh, some of those uh, clear coats and straight down to the base and to their primers and stuff like that. Um, look, to be honest, this car's probably just about due for a proper restoration. It's been painted that many times. Um, but this is just uh, what we got asked to do by the customer, so we do what we get told. And a lot of the time you guys see me, I don't use wet on wet primers, but just to seal all of those cut throughs and stuff like that down, I'm using it this time, um, just to help seal it down. So for this job, I'm gonna be using the Devilbus GTI Pro with the T2 air cap, just for the wet on wet primer that you see me applying here. And um, when we start putting our base coat color down and our clear coat, I'm going to be using the Devilbus GTI with the 110 air cap, which was actually the first spray gun I ever bought. Um, and yeah, it's a beautiful, great gun, and you can see a bit of a comparison here too. Um, so the T2 with the GTI Pro, you can see this gets it on really quite quick. It's got a nice big fan. Um, as we go to the GTI 110, it's got a bit of a smaller fan, but it still gets the paint on nice and quick though. Um, this isn't sped up at all, this is just real time. I know you might see me, um, you might think, wow, he's moving real fast. That, that's just how fast I paint. Um, get the gun nice and close, um, and yeah, just move nice and quick. And, and also this first coat of uh, wet on wet primer, I don't like to put it on too heavy. Um, yeah, I do like to usually put two coats on, so I skipped out part of that second coat just to um, stop the vid from getting too long for you guys. So I gave that maybe about five minutes in between coats, not too long. I've got the booth up nice and warm, so I do about 30 degrees Celsius, which I think is about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit for, you, for my American viewers. Um, and pressure settings, I'm using about 25 PSI, which is about one and a half bar. Um, so yeah, once that's all done, I gave that maybe a good 20 minutes once I've got the two coats on, gave that a good 20 minutes to flash right off and um, yeah, cleaned that gun out and now come back in with the uh, original GTI uh, and the 110 as I mentioned earlier. So this has actually got a 1.4mm uh, fluid needle and uh, fluid tip on it. So um, yeah, it's a bit bigger. I use the 1.3 mil on my GTI Pros and my Pro Lights. But with this gun, it must be set up totally different than the Pro or the Pro Light. Um, so I like to have the uh, fluid control wound all the way out. So if you wind it um, completely out just so it's hanging in by a couple of threads. Um, so you've got full, full trigger pull. And... Um, because it's such a small uh, air cap, like the, the holes in the side of the air cap are so small, it really doesn't require much air at all to pass through. It's only like about 18 PSI for my base coat. I'm going to jump it up to around 20 to 22 PSI for my clear coat, but um, it really doesn't need much air pressure at all. Um, and you will actually notice also that the fan on this is just a touch smaller. And I'll, So uh, I've actually had to pull the gun back to get a bit more of the capacity of the fan out. So you can see that compared to that um, the wet on wet that I was using, I was going at 100 miles an hour, I was going a lot quicker and I was able to hold the gun a bit closer. So um, yeah, you can see I was slowed, uh, slowed down a touch because I've changed over the gun. But um, yeah, this gun is an absolutely awesome gun and it was around this time, I was just uh, really happy just to paint this and to get the old gun back out again. Like, um, the reason I gave this gun a clean out was um, 
just to make a video with it and show you guys because uh, since I've been making the Gunman uh, these uh, a lot of people have made comments and told me that they love my gun reviews so I thought hey I'd, I'd pull the old girl back out which this gun's actually been sitting and using um, used for uh, like 1k primer and etch primer and stuff like that it's just sort of a workshop gun that um, and yeah, it's 15, nearly 15 years old, 14 years old now, bought it in the year 2000 and yeah, just gave it a soak in the cam gun cleaner, gave it a good soak up and gave it a good clean out and it sprays like brand new still. Um, the only real downfall with these guns that there was, basically there's a little uh, packing gland behind the, um, uh, where the needle comes through to the head of the gun, there's a little uh, packing gland inside there. And basically, occasionally they used to uh, leak a little bit, but the part itself is just basically like a $5 part. You get like five of them for 30 bucks or something like that. So, um, yeah, it's not a big issue. And you just have to keep nipping them up just a touch. Um, if you go too tight, then it makes it so the trigger won't release. But, um, yeah, not a major issue. Just one of, the, one of the very few design flaws in this gun. It's actually great for me to do this job. Um, it had been a long time since I'd used this gun. Uh, probably would have been a good four years ago since I've used it for top coat color or clear or anything like that. Um, I bought the gun in the year 2000, uh, used it for a long time. I think I had three of these guns at one point, um, all with different designs and stuff like that on it. So they've always been a good gun for, for looks and stuff like that. This is a pretty mad design on it. And um, yeah, when 2010 came around, I got my first uh, Devilbus GTI Pro. And um, I sort of never really looked back because, um, yeah, they're just such a big fan on them. And I just absolutely sort of loved the GTI Pros. And then the Pro Lights came out, another step ahead again. But um, yeah, once going back to this, it actually reminded me of how cool they were. They were actually a really good gun. Um, they basically do tick all the boxes that you want out of a spray gun. Um, they're efficient. They're... They're versatile, you can use them for just about any paint. Um, the 110 air cap sort of does actually struggle a little bit with the HS clears because the, um, it, get, it atomizes the paint very extremely finely. Uh, so, um, yeah, totally great gun and uh, it really did bring back some good memories because uh, I used to do work for my uncle at a restoration shop. I used to have a restoration business there in Melbourne and there's actually a lot of paint jobs similar to this that I actually did. Um, so yeah, it was just great to, I did a lot of Studi Bakers and Jaguars and just the old uh, old cars and stuff like that. So for my third coat of base coat, I decided to skip it out on the driver's side there, but I'm including the blending that I'm doing here over on the passenger side. This is mainly just to stop the vid from getting too long for you. It already got up to around the uh, 20 minutes mark anyway, so 18 or so minutes I think it was at the end. So yeah, I use the uh, GTI Pro again just for that blending clear. Just because I like to um, blend into it when it's still wet. So if you guys... Uh, Water-based painters, that's otherwise known as a wet bed. So it, I just call it blending clear, some of the different brands. I think it was uh, Glazerit that I used to use, the 55 line, used to call their uh, wet bed a blending clear. So It's basically just a clear coat of base coat in Standox, uh, which is what I'm using here. That's That was just 599, so any of you solvent Standox users, all that is is just straight 599 uh, mixed at a one to one ratio so 50% thinner is 50% uh, of the 599 and then use that to blend so there you go you can see the uh, the gun laid that metallic down real nice it's not patchy at all and here we go on with our clear coat For this job I'm using the uh, Duke Zone Plus 2k clear um, it's an extremely nice clear and as you'll be able to see here it holds a very nice gloss so the settings on this gun for clear coat, pretty uh, similar to the base coat. Uh, I've got that fan still wound right open. I've still got that fluid sort of right out type thing. Uh, all I've done is just up that pressure just a touch. So I've moved it up to about, say around 20 to 22 PSI is where I'd want to have it. Um, yeah, like when I actually learnt to spray paint, um, the tradesman that I worked under 
they never ran regulators on their guns, so I never ran regulators on their on my guns. Uh, I just learnt to paint by feel. So you just yeah, plug the gun in, set it till it sounds right, and just watch your painting going on. I think, in a way, it's um, it's yeah, probably better than uh, sort of having to follow textbook rules and stuff like that. Um, and to be honest, I still paint just by feel. Um, I don't set my gun at. I do try to set my gun at the, at the start, and then um, if it's just not going on quite right, well then I'll adjust the way I'm painting or my pressures as I'm sort of halfway through painting. Another thing can be just simple stuff like fluctuations in air pressures at the workshop that you're working at, or at the if you're doing it at home, you're going to have fluctuations in the air pressure because you your compressor can't keep up when you're doing the entire side. So you're going to have to alter the way that you paint to the conditions and to the way the the gun's actually spraying. And it's very important to get your eye into the reflection. So actually watching every single pass of uh, when you're spraying. Um, so another thing I would like to make just a quick mention of, um, I'm going to do an entire video dedicated to this subject because I had another guy make a mention to it. Um, I do mention about you guys if you're doing stuff at home. Now, in Australia, it is uh, law that you are not allowed to do any two-pack painting unless it is in a spray booth or in a workshop environment with uh, correct ventilation. So, you are not allowed to do any of this kind of stuff at home. Some people do it. Some people get away with it as well. I personally always use a spray booth at work. Um, so if you and another thing is safe so it's basically safety is the issue I wanted to make a video about and this guy mentioned so yeah just make sure you're always number one wear breathing apparatus because this stuff when it's uh, turned into a mist that you are uh, spraying so the overspray uh, you breathe that stuff in you'll kill yourself in no time um, and yeah your eyes and stuff like that um, yeah just set fans up if you are to do it at home and filters and stuff like that obviously it's an ignition point too the, this, these fumes are highly flammable so don't just sit your uh, heater next to the car and then ex and you know because you it is uh, dangerous stuff it's dangerous for you it's dangerous for the environment um, so yeah, anyway, there, and there also are other ways of doing it. You can say do, do all your prep work at home and then hire out a spray booth. Um, there's places in every major city that have spray booths that get hired out and for a, for a daily rate you can just pay them and go in there and do your own paint work. So yeah, just make sure you hang around to the end. I've got um, an ending to this so you get to see the video, the car once it's all painted up and that. And also after that we've got a... Uh, couple of links to a couple of my other personal favorite vids and also a link to check out my channel where I've got loads of playlists and uh, other videos on gun reviews and stuff like that um, I've also got a Facebook page so make sure you check me out on Facebook there's a link in the description of each one of my videos um, so check me out on Facebook which is where I post loads of pictures and Every one of these uh, videos gets posted up on my Facebook page too, just in case you miss them here on YouTube. So, this car here was actually, um, took some photos of it once I finished painting it, and uh, it was one of my most popular posts so far. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot guys for supporting me, and thanks for watching my stuff. It is very appreciated. Without you guys, it's nothing. Um, this is my life, I've dedicated so much of my life this year to making these videos and I've had a great time, I know you guys enjoy watching them, I get nothing but good comments and um, yeah, good feedback so I know you guys love watching it and I've been able to share my love of spray painting with the entire world so it's been great. Um, there's loads more good videos to come, I've got loads of different ideas and make sure you do uh, make some more comments and send me messages if there's anything you'd like me to do. Um, I obviously do my best to get back to you as, as soon as possible, sometimes uh, I can't get back to you straight away because I'm an extremely busy man. As you can see I've uh, you know, got, a, got a job to hold down and I've got this YouTube channel and uh, work never stops on these videos, they don't edit themselves and it does take quite a lot of my time up just making these videos for you guys. So Anyway, this job's coming up to an end now. 
It came out really nice. Extremely happy with the overall uh, finish that we got with it. Um, unfortunately, the footage that I got uh, of the car when it's outside of the booth, it wasn't 100% finished off. I usually like to, um, once they're all washed up, get a bit of footage of it, but this car, it sat around for a couple of weeks and I was waiting for it to be finished and washed up and bang, then it just went. Uh, so I missed it unfortunately, but we do have a bit of uh, a good look at it either way when it's still not quite washed up. There's another look at the gun, final look at the gun. You can see it's done done a few kilometers, that thing. And I reckon it's got a few more to go in it yet. So here we go with the final look over the car when it's just off the gun here, yet to be baked. I then like to uh, go out, clean my gun out. That gives me about five minutes by the time I've cleaned the guns out. Come back, hit the bake button on the spray booth for about 30 to 45 minutes. If the car's just going to sit there, if it's the last job of the day, I don't even usually worry about baking them. So, um, I'm from WA, Western Australia, in Australia, and uh, it's quite warm over here most of the time of the year. Um, and I prefer painting in the heat myself. I think it's um, a lot easier just, uh, just to apply clear coats and just takes a lot less time uh, waiting for a couple of minutes in between coats on a job like this in summer I'll just walk around put one coat of base coat on by the time I get back to the start that's dry ready to put your next coat on and with clear coat yeah you probably still give it a couple of minutes depending on the heat but here we go with the final look over the car this is when it's out the back being polished up by the lads um, I usually don't have to do my own polishing thankfully this is good that I've got guys here that can do it for me so as I said before, it's a 1971 model, 280SE 3.5, so it's got a nice sunroof in it. I'll give you a bit of a look at the interior. Beautiful looking car, inside and out. So it's got the nice, I love the look of the chrome. I actually used to have a uh, 1969 uh, Mercedes-Benz. It was a four-door though, and it was a diesel model, 220D. It was, uh, I used to love that thing. Well, unfortunately, the timing chain snapped and I never had enough money to uh, fix it up. So, here we go with a look at the interior. After this, check out those links at the end if you've missed out on them. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.